Good evening, everybody, and welcome to St. Helena, home of the St. Helena Saints, where tonight the Fort Bragg Timberwolves are on the road taking on the St. Helena Saints. It's a beautiful evening here in Napa Valley. The temperature probably in the 60s right now as you get ready to kick this thing off. In the Junior Varsity Contest, the Junior Varsity from St. Helena beat Fort Bragg 34 to 12, and uh, it was a good effort early on by the junior varsity team. They did have a touchdown call back due to a penalty that they never quite recovered from in the second half. And uh, at that point then, the uh, Saints pulled away at the end and won it again 34 to 12 was the final there. The varsity now with a coin toss out in the center. St. Helena wearing their home red uniforms with a white trim. Beautiful field here. It's artificial surface. It's bowed very nicely, crowned in the middle, so it drains nicely to either side, which means if you do snap the ball in the middle of the field here and you run it either direction, left or right, you're going to go downhill for a few feet. And uh, it's kind of nice when you're running outside to have a, a football field that's crowned like this. Uh, overall, the field is in excellent shape. Some of the artificial surface that was put in many years ago has been worn down a little bit, but not this field. They've been very careful. They don't allow metal cleats when the track teams are here out on that field, and uh, they've done a very good job of keeping it in excellent condition. We've been doing games here recently for the past, I think, five years for Mendocino TV, and uh, nowhere really on the field whatsoever that I can tell walking out there before the game. Now, the Timberwolves were without two of their two-way starters tonight. Jeremy Segura is not suited up. He is an outstanding lineman, especially on defense, and also John Rexrode will not be suited up. Fort Bragg so has won the, toss. the Timberwolves they have won the toss. They'll receive, receive the, the kickoff, kickoff, and we'll get they going here really the soon. They're wearing their total zone, white traveling uniforms. Now, this, this year, time, they like featured the purple pants, which look pretty nice under the lights. But tonight, zone. they're wearing all white anthem. on the road with their purple numerals and gray trim. The Timberwolves and the Saints getting ready to go. The national anthem now. The flag will not be able to be uh, we can't pick it up on our camera. If we swing towards the flag, you're only going to see a speaker. So bear with us. Know that Old Glory is waving there, and here's our national anthem. All right, we are getting set for some Thank high school you, football high school Friday Pepper. night under the lights from St. Helena, right, California. I'm Wendy Peters from Mendocino TV. Thanks for, for joining us the here. The, the Timberwolves coming in here with a record of 2-2 two and two in league play. The St. Helena Saints coming in here with a record of 2-2 two and two in league play. Timberwolves coming off a win last week against Clear Lake, and the St. Helena Saints last week lost to Middletown. Now, Fort Bragg, if they can get a win here tonight, We'll go three and two in league play, and then we'll have two games left, both of them at home, Middletown and Willits. So this is really one of the big games here tonight of the season for Fort Bragg. This could be a turning point. They're a little upset, I think, the coaching staff, the two of the starters aren't here suited up that are so key to both the offense and defense. But uh, that's the way it is, so they're going to have to go a little bit shorthanded and see how they do. Fort Bragg will send their kickoff return team out. William Robertson and Wyatt Curdie are the two men back to receive deep. Curdie wearing number two closest to you here on the screen, whereas Setting Robertson set is set it the Saints will be number 23, Luis on the far sideline. So here we go. The, the Saints will be kicking it off. Wyatt Curti and number 42, William Robertson. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. It is So Randall Mosley will be kicking it off for the Saints. 
He's a lefty. And there's a kick, deep kick over William Robertson's head and bounces into the end zone that for a touchback. That kick is in the end zone by prep rules. That is a touchback. So the Timberwolves will take over first down. They'll have it at their own 40-yard line. Well, I'm sorry, their own 25-yard line. Timberwolves will take over well, it, on the touchback first in 10 it happens, the 20-yard line. It happens so rarely it'll be the 20-yard line that I didn't even know exactly where they do spot it. High school kickoffs generally do not become touchbacks, but rather are returned. So first down, Timberwolves will have it at their own 20-yard line. Robertson in the backfield along with quarterback Julian Clavel. One man split out left, one man split out right. Double tight end formation. They give to Robertson. He goes right up the middle. No, there's a fumble. Well, I'm not sure what happened. I think that was an option, and Clavel kept the ball. I thought he gave it to Robertson. No, he did give it to Robertson. Hand he just went flying backwards. William Robertson <laughs> stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Second down and 10. Tommaso in the middle of that Saints defense. Cody D. Tommaso made the Second tackle for the Saints. For the as Robertson went flying backwards, it looked almost as though there was a, a loose ball on the on the ground, the way he went flying down back towards the turf. Anyway, no gain, second and ten. Same formation for the Timberwolves with Robertson back behind Clavel. Now the Timberwolves are going to burn a timeout here as, again, they're a little confused timeout. maybe Fort Bragg. First on charge, the formation. First timeout of the half, two remaining for this first half. But Fort Bragg calling a timeout on the second the play point. from scrimmage here. Well, like I said, it's a beautiful night at St. Helena, and we want to thank the sponsors that make it possible to bring you Timberwolves football, including Ryan Perkins, attorney at law, Mendocino Cookie Company in Zappa, Coffee, Sport Chrysler Jeep Dodge, your favorite sport, Stephen Dunlap Roofing, done once, done twice, done right at Dunlap. Thank you very much to those sponsors for making it possible to bring you Timberwolves football here. Second and 10 as we come back to live action from the 20-yard line, just underway. Again, in the junior varsity contest, if you missed it, the Fort Bragg JVs were defeated by a score of 34 to 12. Saints have a pretty good JV team. All right, this time Myrtle splits way out here to the right. Two backs behind Clavel. He'll give to the second man through. That's Robertson. He's got good yardage up towards well, the 30-yard line to about the 29-yard line. Making his way just shy of a first down. Before Picked up about nine yards. George Talking Cutting. to Coach Roy Perkins before the game. Perkins telling, about nine good telling me that he figured play, William okay, Robertson was going to carry the ball a lot tonight with the absence of John Rexha. And, of course, Cody Morgan no longer uh, playing this year. Uh, so what started out as a triple header backfield with three threats now down to one tonight and that's Robertson and he gets the ball and there's a fumble and He's I think the Saints have it turnover they do Saints ball turnover by, recovered by number 34 that George handoff that Cutting. time is George Cutting recovers a fumble for the Saints and they'll have it in Saints deep will take over on the Timberwolves in the Timberwolves territory at the 28 yard line 28 yard line one nice thing about this artificial field is the way the field is marked. You can really see the yard markers uh, clearly. Uh, and nice angle here from the top of the press box. So first down Saints on the turnover. They'll have it at the typical 28-yard line. Man comes in motion. They give to the first back coming through, bounces off his blocker and gets some good yardage as he gets down to the 20, the picking up about eight yards. Call it second down and eight. Or second down and two, I mean. Well, just shy of the 20-yard line. Just underway, 10.27 to go, first quarter, no score. The, the Saints, so moving along here right now. Timeout for a moment as the kicking tee was never taken off the field by the Saints. Their ball boy runs out and retrieves it, and here we go. Second down and short now for St. Helena. One back, man comes in motion. They give to that back, coming around the right side. He's got a blocker out in front of him. Now Jukes tries to get outside. And got a first down on the jet sweep around as the he right gets side. to the 15-yard line. Yardage for the first down. And the Saints Stopped will have it first down at the Timberwolf 15-yard line. Justin Myrtle. Clavel over there on the far sideline made the stop. It looked as though there was some uh, running room there for a moment. Chains are moved. The result is a first down at the 15-yard line. They Saints did get a first inside. down, but not a whole zone. lot of yards. Ball carrier that time not listed, number 23 in my program. I'll see if I can pick him up from the PA announcer. Now there's a give to the first guy through. He's hit immediately and dropped as the Timberwolves were there that Hand time. Again to Cody DiTomaso. 
stop by number 59, Ethan Hall, Jeffries, and number 55, Jeffries Keith made Nelson. the stop. Nelson Short also on the, play on the stop for the Timberwolves. No Very gain, maybe a yard. Call it second down and nine. Ball just across the 15 at the 14-yard line. They could get a first down right at about the five-yard line. On the far hash mark, second down now, the Saints. Give again, first man through, and he's Breaks a tackle and tries to get around the left side. Can't do it. George Cutting. Cutting the ball carrier. No gain again, I think, or very little. Maybe up Stopped to the 13. Number three, Justin See Murray where they spot it. James Nelson with the Timberwolves. Mm, no, let's call it no, no gain. gain. Third play. down and nine. So play. let's see if the Saints put it in the air. Third and long seven. Quarterback Daniel Martinez. He's a sophomore, 5'10", 165. See if they let him put the ball in the air. This deep in territory, of course, it's four down territory. So Martinez over center, got one back behind him, running that Veer offense. He's back to pass, rolling. Now he looks like he's going to run, puts the ball under his arm. He's got some yardage, and I don't think he's got a first down, but he's down at about the six-yard line where he's out of bounds. On the keeper. Setting up fourth down and short. Fourth down at about the seven-yard line. Correction, Daniel Martinez on the keeper around the left side. Saints now looking at a So it's going to be fourth three. down and two. Call it a long Ball two. Spotted at Ball's the at the seven. They have to get right down to the five. So big play here for both teams. Fourth and two at the Timberwolves' seven-yard line. Martinez over center and a timeout being called by one of these two teams. It's the Saints who call a timeout. You could tell somebody was mixed timeout. up Same as way. coaches started yelling from the sidelines. Well, as I said, it's a beautiful night here. Just a nice crescent moon back behind us. Uh, setting back over Santa Rosa, the hillside silhouetted. Napa Valley, a, a beautiful evening here. Nice day. Temperature had to be in the 80s. Uh, even as we arrived uh, as the late afternoon and early evening set in, it was uh, still in the 70s. And if you were here, you'd... Wouldn't necessarily need a sweater or a coat right now. You can see the officials out there in short sleeves. Uh, coaching staff of the junior varsity game were wearing short sleeve shirts and shorts. The varsity coaching staff wearing long pants. But still, it's been a, a very nice evening here for football. This time of year, of course, is the old saying, the frost gets on the pumpkin and you start doing night games in some places this time of year and it can get kind of chilly when that sun goes down. Not so tonight. All right, here it is. Fourth down, seven-yard line. Early on, first quarter, no score. Saints trying to see if they can get it in. There's a keeper. Right up the middle goes Martinez. Trying to dive forward. I think Martinez he got it. Martinez on the keeper picks up several. Looks like it's going to be enough for his Saints first down. just basically followed the guard, the in two linemen on either side of the center. Timberwolves. And they just got the first down inside the 15 or inside the five down to the four-yard line. Ball so first and goal now. Just outside the four-yard line. First and goal. Salina. The Saints recovering a fumble at the 28-yard line have moved it now to first and goal. Martinez with one back behind him in the backfield. See if a man goes in motion. No, they give it to the first man through, and he goes right into a big pile of Timberwolves. Nelson, one of the first ones to hit him there. Still, before the whistle blows, you uh, I think it was, well, we'll wait and see. Cutting, not sure who it was that carried the ball that time. See who gets up from the bottom. Warring number five, we've got a and Lucas Pactor. Lucas Pactor, Pactor the, the ball middle, carrier, maybe got a yard. Two. A tough yard at that. It's at about the three-yard line now. Second down and goal. Second and goal now at the three-and-a-half-yard line. 7.47 to go here in this first quarter. Just underway. And another timeout called by the Saints. They burned two timeouts. But this is a point timeout. in the field where you don't want to make a mistake. Second charge timeout for the half. We'll leave one remaining. So that brings us to a stop in action here. Fort Bragg. As I mentioned, two and two in league play, coming off a nice win last week against the Clear Lake Cardinals. Clear Lake kind of has a, a down program this year. The Saints, as I mentioned, coming off a loss to Middletown, although Middletown, not the usual powerhouse they are this year, according to what I've heard from others who have seen them play. Uh, talking to some folks who have scouted them a little bit, 
including the athletic director here at St. Helena. We talked about Middletown a little bit before this game. Anyway, here we go. Second and goal. Ball inside the three. Martinez over center. Fakes, throws, intercepted. He tried to throw it over the middle. Clavel, I think, is the man who got it. Or was that Myrtle? I couldn't tell right away, but uh, somebody with a single-digit Myrtle. Justin Myrtle with the interception, and a big one it is right at the goal line. The Saints had it at the two. They threw it over the middle, and it was intercepted. So the ball at the 20-yard line now following the interception in the end zone where the Timberwolves get a big turnover. Now each team has turned it over, but that one was huge for Fort Bragg as they thwarted a scoring drive and got the ball back. They'll have it first down at their own 20. Myrtle splits out to the left. Curdi splits out right. One back, Robertson with Clavel. Saints show blitz, and I believe they went off sides. I think they anticipated the snap that time. Dead ball foul, five-yard penalty. So it'll be first and five. The ball will be at the 25-yard line. First quarter, no score. I'm Lindy Peters from MendocinoTV.com. Thanks for joining us. If you're watching us live or maybe perhaps a replay, it's a Friday night under the lights from St. Helena where the Saints and the Timberwolves locking horns here early on. No score, first quarter. Curdi splits out top of your screen left. Myrtle tight formation here to the right. Clavel right over center. Gives to the first man through and fighting his way for a couple maybe is Robertson. He maybe got up to about the 27-yard line, setting up second down and three. And off goes the number 42, William Robertson. William Robertson is pretty good when he can get in the open field. After picking up a couple, in on the stop is not the biggest back by any stretch, but he's got pretty good moves when he can get into the open field and enough of a burst of speed that he can get away. Um, Not maybe the breakaway speed some backs in the past have shown, but enough that uh, he can make some big. Big place here. Tonight would be a, a good night to, to see a few of them. Second down and three. Clavel's going to keep it. Following Robertson. Spins. Gets away from one man. Jukes gets outside. Just to the 30-yard line. I think he's got a first down. Going around the left side. He had to get just across the get 30. The I believe the he's there. So it'll be Breyer first down Scott. Timberwolves. They'll move the chain. Close to a first down. White Hat says first down. 6.48 to go. First quarter as the Timberwolves move the chains and... Retain the football, keeping the ball on the ground. Fort Bragg wearing all white tonight. Again, one man, that's Kurt I split way out left. Myrtle on the wide receiver position out here to the right. There's a give to Robertson coming across the right side. Robertson over the right side. Picked up about three. three Be second down and seven. Stop by Gannon Wilson. And Daniel Martinez in on the stop as well. Well, as long as you're getting positive yardage, it's a, it's a long three-yard gain, closer a to a four-yard gain, really, for the Timberwolves. Robertson. Not really a counter play, but he started on the left side and crossed over to the right on that play. Let's see what he does here. Lone back behind Clavel. Clavel back to pass, looking to Robertson's side for a swing. Now he's going to roll that way. He's going to take off and run and dive forward and get... Maybe well, a yard. Anybody, it's going to be third down and still about to six to go. Looked Gannon like they were Wilson setting up a swing pass again. to William Robertson coming out of the backfield along the left sideline there, but that was covered nicely, and Clavel wisely did not throw the ball. That's an area we'll where if you throw the ball, and, and it is anticipated, ball. it could go a pick six the other way. So another big third down play for the Timberwolves. They're not really in four down territory. First quarter, no score. I think you want to make sure... If you can uh, get a first down, that'd be nice. But if not, you might probably want to put it away here. So see what they do. Clavel right over center. Back to pass. Play action. In trouble. Stiff arms. Now he throws. Incomplete. In the arms of the pass tackler that time. But a nice play by Clavel to actually get that playoff because otherwise it would have been a big loss. Under heavy pressure. About another 10 yards back the wrong right, direction, so instead it'll be fourth down at the 34-yard line, and the Timberwolves, no doubt, will punt here. No score, first quarter. The Timberwolves got the opening kickoff. 
fumbled it away. The Saints took it down the two-yard line through an interception. So both teams committing turnovers on their first offensive series. Now the Timberwolves, after that interception, fail to move the chains but once, setting up fourth down and six at the 34. There's the snap. The punt is away. It's a good kick. Takes a Fort Bragg bounce inside the 30, still bouncing inside the 25, still rolling all the way inside the 20, down to the 19. So a nice punt, 10, 20, 30, 40, Kick goes 50 down yards. 18-yard line. Where it's spotted at the 19-yard line. First down, St. Helena. Four fifty-nine to go. We're in this first quarter. No score. St. Helena has it now at the 19-yard line as the Timberwolves defense trots back out there. First down, Saints. Again, over center, quarterback Daniel Martinez. Fakes. Got a man down the right side. He's there. The pass well, slightly overthrown. Clavel had the coverage, but he had a couple steps hands. Balls, balls, incomplete. back behind the receiver that time. He on the defense was Julian Clavel for the Wolves. Second and ten for the Saints. Look, Lizzo, uh, if that pass was on the money, that might have been six. I don't know. Clavel may have been able to catch it from behind, but... Uh, Caleb Granados was the intended receiver, just overthrown second and ten. Again, quarterback Martinez over center. Short drop. Now he's running to his right, and he's hit and dropped. A nice tackle at about the 25-yard line. Right Did pick up about five or six. Picks up about five. It's going to be third down. By number Call a six-yard gain. Third Logan down and four. Ponce, Ponce made the stop the for the Timberwolves. We'll call it six on that play. Bring up a third So a big third down play for the, the Timberwolves defense now. Once again, they'll see if they can't put a little pressure on Martinez. See if he puts the ball in the air here. He's got one back comes in motion. Now he pitches to him coming around this left side and he gets away from one man, but his tackle Robertson hit him. But then Cody Velocity finished him off before he got a first down, fourth down, and the Saints will have to punt. In on the stop is Julian nice play Clavel. by Velocity. Clavel will be back Pelosi to punt. For the Wolves. Receive as he gets back at about his own, well, no, at the Saints 45. Be fourth down now for the Saints. And you might uh, see if Clavel can get a nice return here and see if the Timberwolves can get some good field position. There's the punt, left hand or left footed kicker, high kick. Clavel goes back and calls for a fair catch and makes it at the 46-yard line of the Timberwolves. So decent field position for Fort Bragg. They'll have it their own 46-yard line, first and 10. So in the exchange of possessions, the Timberwolves do gain field possession, or field position, that is, and that is a, that's a win there. That punt, once again, which put the Saints back at their own 18-yard line, was instrumental in giving the Timberwolves this field position after the Saints were forced to punt. So first quarter, still no score. 3.30 to go here in this first quarter. They play, of course, 12 minute quarters in high school football. Myrtle splitting out here to the right. Now he goes back to the left in a slot. Curta is splitting way out there, top of your screen. Clavel with Robertson in the backfield. Over center. Gives to Robertson. Trying the left side. There's that burst of speed. He's got some good yardage across that 50 to the 42 yard line of the Saints. First down, Timberwolves. And like I said, Robertson does have that burst Breyer, of speed. And when he can find a seam and when he can get in the open field, he can get away. Whether he has the breakaway speed to break open into the field and go, you know, 80, 90 yards remains to be seen. We haven't seen it yet this year, but he does have the ability to break off big chunks of yardage like he did right there on that play. First down, Timberwolves. Pavel again right over center. Backs are split behind him. He'll give it to Robertson, the first back through, and, and not much this time. To Robertson, no gain on the play. Second down and 10. Gannon, Wilson, Ryland, Under three minutes there. to go, first quarter, no score. And and this George has kind Cunningham of been the pattern that Timberwolves against no Kelseyville, play, remember, went all the way to the fourth quarter with no score before Kelseyville did get a touchdown and then scored another one. 
quickly after that, but that game could have gone either way up until that point. That was a, a big loss for Fort Bragg at Kelseyville. Anyway, second down and 10. Lavelle gets the handoff, gives it to Robertson, ducks through the first tackler, and then is stopped and held up Head just inside the 40 again. to about the 39. Call it third down and about seven now. Cody D. Tomaso in on the stop along with Rowan Knight. Pick up three All right, on that clock, down to about two minutes to go now. Hey, thanks for joining us on Mendocino TV, wherever you might be. I'm Lindy Peters, along with Terry Vaughn, our cameraman and producer. We're uh, under the lights here at St. Alina, and you might be tucked away inside somewhere up in the hills or maybe watching uh, somewhere in the Midwest. Who knows? It's amazing what a webcast can do. Big third down play for the Timberwolves. Lavelle, play action, rolling to his left. He's got a man on him, stiff arms him to the sideline. Throws, incomplete. Kurai well, out there, the intended the receiver. It'll be fourth down, but Pass they are in incomplete. four down territory, I would think, at the 39 yard line of the Saints. We'll see. This battle of field position right now with a minute 34 to go in the first quarter could change here if the Timberwolves do go for it and don't punt. Looks as though they are going to go for a punt here. They're too far away to try and draw them off sides and get a free first down with a five-yard penalty, so they're going to kick it away here. There's the punt, and it's going to go all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Well, that's okay. They'll take kick over the 20-yard punts, the, the kicker for the Timberwolves, and did a nice job on both punts so far tonight. Ball will come out to the 20-yard line where Sailing will take over. It'll first be a 38-yard punt into the end zone with no like return. Like I mentioned, a few of our sponsors here. will be at the 20-yard line, top, first and 10 uh, Saints. All this possible, especially for the generosity of the Saints. Down to a minute 30 to go here in this first quarter. No score as the quarterback, Daniel Martinez, runs out to the Chevrolet huddle from the Saints sideline. First down, St. Louis. Brothers Ranch and Spotswood Winery. Timberwolves line up their defense. Martinez now one back, strong formation to the right. And they give it to the back that direction. He's got some positive yardage up to about the 25. Call it about a four to five yard pickup. It'll be second down and about Cody five. Cody Pelosi, the ball carrier. Stopped by Cody Pelosi. By the time this play runs. Along with Isaac Arnold. will be down to a minute to go here in this first quarter. No score. Five yard gain on the play. It'll be up a second and five for the Saints. Here we go, second down and five. Martinez, quick pass out here, incomplete. Tried to throw a little swing pass Martinez intended for pass, Di Tommaso. For number 21, Cody Di Tommaso on the left side. Falls so it'll be third down and five. The clock Cody stops the now, play, 55 seconds down, to go, first quarter. Five yards to go. First quarter just uh, perking right along here so far. No score, but uh, the clock continuing to run, not... A whole lot of penalties. I'm almost afraid to say that sometimes because I feel I'll curse the officiating when I do that. Anyway, third down and five. Now, formation changes. Comes strong left side here. Martinez over center. Gives. Back comes this way. And he's not going to get anything. Good read by the Timberwolf defense. Looked like uh, Arnold was there. Myrtle also came up Martinez to help on the on stop. Stopped by also, Eastern. Delgado. And number three, Justin Myrtle. So no gain, uh, fourth no down. Gain on the play, bring up a fourth and five now for the Saints. And the Saints will punt the ball away before the clock expires here in the first quarter. So good job by the defense so far for the Timberwolves. Timberwolves are set. The Saints have trouble getting the right personnel out there. Watch for a fake. The Timberwolves have been vulnerable a little bit to the fake this year. There's the kick. Again, the left Footed kicker kicking it away from Clavel and a good bounce for the Saints. My the goodness. Kick takes they just picked up 15 yards the, on that bounce from about the 44 yard line down to about the 30. So the Saints get a good bounce and with five seconds to go in the first quarter, the Timberwolves have time for one play here from the far hash mark and then that'll be the end of the first quarter. Timberwolves will take over first and 10 at the 31 yard line. So both teams have gotten off some very nice punts in terms of a high school punt. That uh, punt for the Saints there from the 20. Close to uh, 
70 yards all told. Well, actually, they had some. That's right. They had a five-yard pickup. Anyway, never mind. First and 10, Timber was far hash mark. Last play of the first quarter. Give to Robertson. Ducks his head over the right side and is dropped back, and but not before he picked Robertson up about three. Right Let's call, call it a two-and-a-half-yard yeah, game. That's the final play the of this first quarter with the score. That'll bring us to zeros. Fort Bragg nothing. No St. Helena nothing. And, and again, our thanks to Ryan Perkins, attorney at law. Dunlap Roofing. Sport, Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, Mendocino Cookie Company, and Zappa's Coffee, making it possible to bring your Timberwolves football here tonight from St. Helena. Also want to thank our friends at Fort Bragg Transmission. They do more than transmission work there. Dave and his staff can uh, work on just about any problem your vehicle All may be Saints having, can. so Please stop be in. And be sure and thank our friends at Fort Bragg Transmission, longtime sponsor of Timberwolves football here on Mendocino Activities. All right, the first quarter's over. It's in the books, no score. Only threat really came from the Saints when they headed down at the two-yard line before the Timber was intercepted in the end zone. It looked like Justin Myrtle made the interception. The PA announcer here said Clavel made the interception, so one of us is right, and one of us is wrong, I think. <laughs> or we're both wrong, but we can't both be right. Second and eight as we begin this second quarter. The Timber was having it at their own 34-yard line. Lindy Peters here for MendocinoTV.com. Thanks for making us part of your evening. If you're enjoying this webcast live. St. Helena has a pep band. It's always nice at a high school game to hear the pep band in the background. I don't know if our mics can pick them up. The PA announcer, though the speakers are about three feet away from my microphone. You can probably hear him really well, maybe too well. I don't know. Uh, but that's a problem we're just going to have to deal with. All right. First play of the second quarter. The Timberwolves give it to William Robertson, trying to get outside, right side. Now he cuts it back inside. Got and up across the to 35 to about the 36-yard line. Setting up third right down and about four. By Gannon Wilson for the Saints. Picks up a few on the play. Going to bring up a third and five now. Fortback has it across the 35 and the call it right at the 36-yard line. Just over the 36. Big third down play, though. A little less than five yards to go. But it'd be nice if they could sustain a drive here, take some time off the clock, clock uh, sustain a drive, and put some points on the board. Their defense playing well thus far. All right, here we go. Three men split out here left. One back behind Clavel. Here's a pass. Back behind Ponce. Makes a catch. Jukes a tackle. Tries to get outside. Doesn't get there. He's short of the first down. Logan Almost looked like Ponce should have kept going up the middle. Easy to say from this angle, but it almost looked like he had more, uh, perhaps more potential of getting a first down if he kept it going up the seam in the middle rather than trying to cut back outside. He gave the defender a chance to get an angle on him, but that, like I said, easy to see up here. Fourth down now. The Timberwolves will have to punt. Ponce back in punt formation. They are in a uh, position now where they could try and fake the Saints with a hard count, see if they can draw them off sides. They don't. There's a snap. They don't even rush. The kick is away. It's a good kick for Fort Bragg, taking a good bounce again. On this artificial surface, that ball is bouncing like a pinball machine all the way down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Kick goes down to the 18-yard line. No return. So... Another nice punt from Ponce, pinning the Saints back inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. So the Saints will have it for the first time in the second quarter. There's a give, run up the right side, not much. The ball carrier. In on the stop is James Nelson, along with Isaac. Picked up about Arnold five, second down and five now. Picks up five. I understand we do have some and five now for the Saints. folks uh, watching our webcast. I'll get to that in a second here. We'll mention their names. Second down and five. There's a give. First back coming through. He's going to be short of the first down up to about the 25-yard line. Dita Moss of the ball carrier. It'll be third down and about three. Ash Price in on that stop. We want to say 
Hello to Mrs. Perkins, 95 years old, watching. And also, I uh, understand, a former quarterback for the Timberwolves, John Cortapazzi, somewhere down in San Diego, probably enjoying a cold one watching this game as well. So we got them all over the place. Third down, short yardage, might get and the first. Cortapazzi, Di Tommaso, again, the, the ball the carrier. The spot is going to be short of the 30 in on the stop, uh, 20, 72, Hayes, seven yard line. So they are going to be short fourth and a yard. Fourth and a long one for the Saints. Here's where you don't get called off sides. Looks like they're going to go for it. Fourth and one. There's the give. There's, ooh, I don't know. That's going to be and close. Tommaso, it's going to be close. I think uh, Delgado might have stopped him. Ponce also came in. Cody Falasi also. Logan but Ponce in on the stop. It depends on the spot, Along really. With Cody Falasi. They might have to bring out the chain. They're right at the 37-yard line, right at the marker. Yeah, it is a first down. At the 38-yard line. Saints. Just over the 37. First down, Saints. I'll give them credit. They went for it there. Martinez over center, one back behind him. They give it to him. It looked as though they almost were going to, Martinez was going to keep it. Instead, they sort of both carried the ball that time, maybe for a yard up Martinez to the 30-yard line. Carrier, picks up maybe two on the play. Stop that option on the veer, you can the give it to that first back, and or you can sort of put it in his belly, then take it out and sweep. Oftentimes, it'll be a trailing back you could pitch to. And there's the third timeout called by the Saints. And he's not happy. Head coach Brandon Farrell, that's his third timeout. That's the final oh, timeout the of the Saints half. Third and final charge timeout for the half. And I could hear him yelling from here, and it's it's as though the quarterback came to the sideline to get a play, and then he didn't something he didn't like about either what was being the formation or something. I don't know. <laughs> he just suddenly yelled timeout. They weren't anywhere close to having a delay of game or anything, and they hadn't even really set up yet. So they're set up now. Second down and eight. Ball just across the 29, actually just short of the 30 is where it's spotted. 8-11 to go, second quarter, no score. Saints have it, second and eight. There's a... Back coming around this side now. One man can't make the tackle. The second man does. Time. Thankfully, Robertson makes the tackle. Ponce right unable to contain him on the outside. On the and a first and down for the Saints. First down. I'll have to catch that name. 23 is not listed in our program. William Robertson in on the stop for the Wolves. Robledo is the running back's name, so we'll have to add that to our roster here. All right, first down, Saints at the 40. Robledo comes in motion, gets the ball. Sweeping around the left side, cuts it back, got some room. Robertson, the one man that can catch him. Can he get there? No, Robledo takes it all the way. 60 yards, touchdown, Saints. Touchdown. Touchdown, Saints. They are in the end zone. Well, Saints put up six with 740 remaining in the, the first PA half. announcer is, uh, well, not much I can do about it, folks. <laughs> that speaker is two feet away from my microphone, and you're just going to have to live with that all night. My goodness. That 60 was yard run culminates a yelling yard so loud it almost, uh, you could probably almost hear it back and forth, brag without amplification. My goodness. Anyway, touchdown makes it 6 nothing. Saints, 740 to go here in the second quarter. Robledo, the left foot kicker, will try the extra point spot. Plenty of distance. It's good. The snap the hole, the kick, it is all good. Robledo's extra point is 7 nothing good. Saints. 7.40 to go in this second quarter. So there's that big play. Robledo, who started off to the left. He came in motion, got the handoff, started left. Saw it was sealed off, stopped, cut back other direction, and only man that really had a chance with an angle on him was William Robertson, and he just couldn't quite catch him. As I said, William doesn't have the the super speed that you need 
either as a running back or, uh, in that case, as a defender trying to chase somebody down. But he's, he's not slow. I don't mean it like that. But that was an example there Jenny, where he just the couldn't high pep come band, up get down. Goodness. Well, if I have a couple eardrums left, it'll be amazing after tonight, but I'm going to do my best. I think I feel worse for the camera lady for the varsity high school team here from Fort Bragg. She's about two feet even oh, closer. The kick for the Saints. Need the ball. It is nice here, though. I must say the Saints have done a great job. They've boosted the rooftop here, and they put a barricade around, a nice big steel barricade, so you're not going to fall off. And it used to be kind of rickety up here, so it's very nice. But the problem is they put these giant speakers that Bill Graham would be proud of that, in fact, Robert Plant could sing over Led Zeppelin through, and the PA announcer is doing pretty much that. Anyway, there's a kickoff taken at the 10. Robertson has it at the 20. Spins back around and is down at about oh, yeah, the 25-yard line. Takes the ball at the 10-yard line, brings it out to the 15 before he's stopped by Lucas Pactor of the Saints. So the ball is at the 25. Don't be mistaken by that call from the piano. So there you go. Seven and a half minutes to go. So first down for Bragg at their own 25-yard line, now trailing 7-0. And Robledo, the kicker for the Saints, seems to have plenty of legs. So if they're in a situation where a field goal might be important in this game, uh, he certainly seems to have the foot that could make the difference. Timber was out of the eye formation now. Two backs behind Clavel, right over center. They give it to the second man through. That's Robertson trying to get it around the right side. And he picks up Luis about Luis five Luis yards. The corner blitz all the way from the other side to make the stop. Close to the 30. Call a four-yard pickup to the 29, second down and six. George Cutting also in on the stop. Often when you could stretch out a play like that, trying to get to the outside, you could see, find a seam and cut up. And that's pretty much what Robledo did on his touchdown run. He actually cut it back the other way. So the Timberwolves will have it, not throwing the ball much, keeping it on the ground a lot. Two backs again behind Clavel, Robertson, and Ponce. They give to first man Robertson. He's got a first down up across the 35 up to the 40-yard line. First down, Robertson Timberwolves. straight up the middle being stopped by Eric Martinez. And that really has been the best play be is right out of to the, the Timberwolves' line offensive now. line this year has done a good job overall in just about every game. Now, granted, they are missing Segura tonight. They're also missing Rexro in the backfield who would be giving Robertson a blow now and then, but William is going to have to carry the load here. So first down at their own 40 now. Myrtle splitting out left, Curdice splitting out right. Not much of a factor so far at wide receiver tonight. Clavelto out of the shotgun now. This time he's going to run. And, oh, boy, he's hit hard well, right across the 40 to 43. He gets up. But uh, you could hear that hit up here. Maybe a two-yard gain, well, second and eight. Is number 70, Ryland Campos, big hit Six in there for ten to go Wilson. in the half. St. Alita seven, four brag nothing. Lindy Peters here from MendocinoTV.com. Clavel's a good runner, but he's such an important part of this offense at quarterback and also on defense at safety, so you want to keep him healthy. Two men split out here to the left now for the Timberwolves. Out of the spread now, the true spread, two men split out to the right. One back. Clavel back, throws. Incomplete. There's a penalty flag and a good call. Pass the St. Helena is not going to like it, but your camera work will show. Pass I should say our camera Cole work, Killian. if you take a look at it, will show. I think that number six got there a little early. That was a Briar, a Scott Breyer, or Briar Scott, that is. One of those kids with two first names. A pass interference against the Saints. Anyway, so pass interference is a call. It'll be an automatic first down first or a 10-yard pickup for the Timberwolves as they get into the Saints' territory to the 44-yard line. First down, Timberwolves. Clavel out of the shotgun again, going to run himself. He's got some room. He bursts through the seam to the 30, to the 20, and down at the 15-yard line. 
Nice run by Clavel that right time. Side, Cody Di Tommaso, Got a block. Looked like Delgado sprung him free, coming around, and then Clavel took off to the races, getting all the way down inside the 15, first and 10. Timberwolves at the 13 yard just line. The 14 yard line. I just mentioned that Clavel is a good runner, uh, but you know you want to be careful with him. And there you go. Nice run that time. So this is the. Deepest the Timberwolves have been now inside the red zone for a scoring opportunity. Let's see if they can convert. First down at about the 13. One man way out here left. That's Kurdog. Clavel gives it to Robertson. He cuts back. He's down to about the well, nine-yard line, I think. There. Picked up about four. Second and down and Scott, six. You know, stop. Just inside the 10. 5 0 9 to go in the half. Seven, ball at just outside the 10 yard, right at the 10 yard line. They move the ball back now to the 10 yard line from the original spot. Port Bragg up to the line of scrimmage, second down, and call it seven. On the near hash mark, Lavelle out of the shotgun. Robertson in the backfield with him. Formation coming right. Robertson. With a good block, Clavel on the moves to about the four. I thought maybe he had a first down, but Stop I think he's short. 54, Gannon Wilson. Setting up third down and about a yard at the five-yard line. Timber was doing very well at not making any mistakes down, right now. One now inside the five-yard line. They have to play mistake-free in this part of the field. Third and short. Taking a long time now. They better hurry up and get this playoff. They do have two timeouts left before halftime. 4.06 to go, trailing 7 nothing. Clavel right over center, takes the snap. He's going to give it to Robertson, trying the left side, cutting back, trying to fight his way in. I think he's got a first down. The Timberwolves Robertson offensive line trying to help too. But I think he got a first down to about the one-yard line. will be enough for a... Kimberwell first and first goal down, at the one-yard line. Just the that was all William line. Robertson. He was hit at the line of scrimmage. He just kept his legs churning and Jake Lehman, got a little help there. With George Cutting in on the stop. Arnold came in and gave him a little shove, which is perfectly legal as an offensive lineman. When there's a big pile like that, go ahead and move it forward if you can. First and goal at the one. The way they're moving the ball off the line, I would be surprised if they didn't just go right up the middle here. And they do. Clavel keeps it. He's in. Touchdown, Timberwolves. And that's a Timberwolves touchdown. So the Fort Bragg Timberwolves have scored with 3.20 to go in the second quarter. It's now 7-6. Saints with the Timberwolves now to try the extra point. Good call by Coach Perkins that time. Just the way you're moving that line, go right behind him, right up the middle for a touchdown. And Clavel on the keeper, put it in the end zone, and now the Timberwolves with a chance to tie it up. Justin Myrtle will try the extra point. There's a snap, spots down, the kick is blocked. And the point after try is blocked Bad. and no good. Not sure what happened there. The, they were sure slow getting that kickoff and not Myrtle's fault. And I'm not sure it really was Clavel's fault. It just seemed like a slow snap. Everything just seemed slow. And now the Timberwolves trail, 7-6. 3.20 to go in the half. What's been a, a fairly quick first half so far. So Fort Bragg will kick it off, trailing 7-6. Nice drive down the field that time for Fort Bragg. Clavel with the big run down inside the red zone that really helped set that up. Then, of course, he finished it off with a one-yard plunge into the end zone. Fort Bragg on the scoreboard, but trailing after the blocked extra point, 7-6. So we'll get set to kick it off now. 
Cody Velocity to do the honors. There's the kick, a low bouncer taken by the up man. Now it goes to the ground, and he falls right on it at the 40-yard line. So Cody the Saints with Velocity's decent kick field position. Covered by Jackson Denna. Boy, I think you could probably hear Saints this. will take over with decent field position at the 40-yard line. I think you could probably hear this PA announcer in Calistoga. What do you think? You think? <laughs> I think you could. Perhaps in Napa. I don't know. Maybe over in Vallejo. Anyway, he's a nice guy, and he's doing a good job. I, it's just a little loud. First and 10, Saints at their own 40. Martinez at quarterback, one back behind him. That's D. Tommaso. Back to pass. Setting up a screen. There's the tight end screen. Catch is made. Yardage gain, first down across midfield of the 48. Kurdoff. Coming up to make the, the stop. Screen, also, Logan screen. Ponce. Picks up about 12 on the play. Moves the ball inside Wolves territory to the 48 yard line. Stop. So was first made down, by Saints Wyatt at the Timberwolves 48 yard line. One man split out left, two men split out here right. Martinez with one back behind him. He'll give it to him. Right up the middle he goes. No, that's Martinez who's got it. He keeps it, and nice. He faked me out. Gets Martinez around the right side. Martinez picks up about is stopped six. by Robertson after he got Stop across the 45 down to the 43-yard line. That's that Isaac veer Arnold. option where, again, you either give it to the back or you take it out of his belly and keep it to yourself. Martinez kept it himself, did a good ball handling job that time, had me faked out. Picked up about five. Second down and five. Now he gives to the first man through. And once again, and that's up. Dito Masso. And oh. no, that's Martinez again faking me out. Keeping it himself across the and 20 down to the 14-yard line. Tomaso, but a keeper by Martinez and that's all the way what happens the on that line. veer. And beautifully done by Martinez that Logan time. On the stop if you can keep it in his belly and the two of you run together Saints tandem for a couple of steps zone, like they've done tonight a couple of times, including in the right there, very difficult as a defender on deciding who to tackle. And uh, even if you get the right guy, he still could give it to the other guy. So first down, Saints. Martinez, this time again, keeps it himself after faking it and gets another Martinez good yardage gain up in down the, to the five yard line. Inside the 10 to the 6, outside the 5-yard line. Two minutes line. remaining in the half, and Saints are on the move. Ball down about the 6-yard line. Second down and 4. Once again, one back behind Martinez. He's running that same play. You might as well just tackle them both if you can. And there's another nice play defending... Forward progress that stop. Play by the Timberwolves. No gain. Third down. Bring up a See third if they down. put it in the air again. Now, remember last time they put it in the air deep in Timberwolf territory, they threw an interception. Trying to throw it to a tight end crossing the middle. So third down. They get a first down at the three-yard line. Ball at about the six. D. Tomasa with that same play. And this time, I think he might have the first down. Touchdown. He's all the way in. The end zone. Touchdown, yeah, Saints. Touchdown, Saints. One or five remaining in the half. Saints are in the end zone again. So about a three-yard or six-yard touchdown run by Dee Tommaso that time. Nice run as he just kept going, and it's very difficult on that uh, option to tell whether Martinez or Di Tommaso has it. They're really doing a good job, almost as if they collide with each other. Here's the extra point by Robito, and it's again plenty of distance. Almost it's completely out of the, the kick. It is all good. Field here. Saints go on so, top. 13, with 105 to go here There's in the half, the score, San Alita 14, Fort Bragg 6, and the Timberwolves are going to have to come back here tonight. So nice drive by the Saints that time. Martinez doing most of the damage with his runs and slick ball handling. This field is different than a lot of fields in that 
for one, you've got the bleachers. You've got a wide buffer zone between the bleachers and the track. Well, I just don't know if I can keep fighting this PA guy all night. My goodness. Okay. As I was about to say, there's a big buffer zone between the bleachers and the track. Then there's a full track. A beautiful track. Indoor-outdoor track here. Then you've got the field way out there. It's almost like the Oakland Coliseum. So the field is a little further from the bleachers than most fields are. And all I'm trying to make an excuse for myself being a little bit faked out by some of the ball action there on the field from the Saints offense. Anyway, there's a kickoff. It's fallen on by the Timberwolves right at the 23-yard line. By William Robertson at the 22-yard line. Correction, Wyatt Kirkai downing that ball. So with a minute and two to go before half, the Timberwolves have it. Now remember, the Saints will get the kickoff to begin the second half as Fort Bragg received the kickoff to begin this game. So Fort Bragg has it with the ball right at the 23-yard line, first and 10. Little or no time left here, less than a minute after this play is snapped. There's a give to Robertson. Trying the left side, weaves his way forward to about the 27-yard line. Being stopped by number two. Clock Daniel stops Martinez. with 52 seconds to go here, and the Timberwolves have a chance to they do have another timeout. I think maybe two timeouts. Anyway, second down and seven for the Timberwolves. Come up to the line of scrimmage. Two men splitting out here to the left. One man, that's Kurt, I split out right, top of your screen. Clavel out of the shotgun, back to pass. Looking for Kurt, I up the sideline. And he jumps, oh, can't quite make the catch at the 40 yard Clavel's line. Clavel's pass is intended for number two, Wyan Kurt, I. So incomplete In stops the, defense, the clock with 15 seconds 12, to go. Eric that Martinez ball was on the money. Ball Good pass. Incomplete. It's one of those plays where Third any, and seven with 15 seconds remaining in the any half. one of those two ball carriers could have caught that pass or should, should defender or the receiver could have caught that pass and as it was it fell incomplete so this will probably be the final play of this first half 15 seconds left it's third down at the 27 yard line the Timberwolves need a 73 yard miracle here before halftime Clavel out of the shotgun. Gives it to Robertson. Robertson, nowhere to go. And that'll end the first. Well, let's see if they try and call a timeout. There's fourth down. Seven, six, five. Handoff goes four. to William Robertson. It looks like they're just going to let the half run we'll out. The they play. do. And that's the end of the first half. In the, first half. the score, St. Helena 14, Fort Bragg 14, 6. Fort Bragg As six. I said at the top of our webcast, this is a big game for both teams. The Timberwolves, though, coming to halftime trailing, 14-6. We'll take a break here. Again, our sponsors, Ryan Perkins, attorney at law, Fort Bragg Transmission, Dunlap Roofing, Sport Chrysler, Jeep Dodge, and Mendocino Cookie Company, and Zappa's Coffee. Lindy Peters for Terry Vaughn at MendocinoTV.com. Thanks for joining us. Hey, it's still anybody's game. Stick around. Second half will be coming up here in just a few minutes. The score again at halftime, St. Helena 14 and Fort Bragg 6. Kind of nice now to be able to talk without the PA announcer, but... Now it's time for me to be quiet, so we'll be back for the second half. Stay tuned.
this is great. Where else can you drive up and get parking 10 feet from the main gate? <laughs> yeah, that was the best parking trip I've had in a long time. You didn't have time to run to the car.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back to St. Alito High School. Lindy Peters from EndocinoTV.com. I thought I'd get some commentary in before I'm fighting the PA announcer here, so let's do it. First half, well, both teams struggled early on committing turnovers on their first possession. The Timberwolves fumbled the football, and then the Saints threw an interception. The Saints drew first blood with a touchdown and an extra point on a long run, a 60-yard run. Robledo, the ball carrier. And then they were able to get their second touchdown on a breakaway run from their quarterback to set it up down inside the five and then a six-yard run from their running back, Di Tommaso, for the touchdown. The Timberwolves' only touchdown came when Julian Clavel, on a long run, set up the touchdown also from his quarterback position running the football. And then on third and goal from the one-yard line, following the center, the two guards just went straight up the middle for the touchdown. The extra point was blocked, however. There's where we stand. It's 14-6. to six. MendocinoTV.com, Lindy Peters, thanks. A beautiful evening here. Starting to chill down a little bit now, as you might expect, this late. But uh, still a lot of people in shirt sleeves. Timberwolves gathered around Coach Perkins. Saints gathered around Coach Farrell here on the near sideline as they get their final instructions. Clock with just about 20 seconds to go before we get ready for the kickoff. Remember, the Timberwolves will be kicking off to begin the second half. Well, there you have it. I got that all in without having to fight the PA announcer, which will not be the case here in just a couple of seconds. So here we go. We're ready for the second half. 14-6 Saints. A lot of football left. 12 All right, quarters. ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Second half action. We have a bowl game here, 14-6. to six. And there, my friends, is the friendly PA announcer. Wolves won the opening toss and elected to receive. That means the Saints will receive the second half kickoff. They will be defending the north end zone. You know, it might be fun to get a speaker like that just for fun at a jack-in-the-box and have the person crawl, you know, get up there, roll Cody the window Pelosi down about five feet away. What would you like to order? Blow him right off the seat there. All right, here we go. Falassi will kick it off for the Timberwolves. Three men deep for the Saints. End over end kick taken on the far side at the 29 to the 30 to the 35 up the sideline to the 40 spinning around. It looked like the ball came loose. Maybe not. It looked like he almost lost the football, but Eric Martinez, Martinez takes kick, returns at about 10 yards. Stopped by Cody 39 Pelosi. yard line where it'll be first down. St. Helena. Two, Wyatt Kirk guy. See where they actually spotted at the 40. Make that the 41. Take over on the first drive of the second half at the 41 yard line. So St. Elise will have it here first down. Ball at their own 40 yard line. Martinez at quarterback. Man comes in motion. Robledo. They give to him. He's trying this right side. Stiff arms one man, then is hit by Clavel and dropped. At about Lisa the 45 yard line, picking right up about side, four yards. Up about five yards before he stopped by Julian Clavel. And number three, Justin Myrtle. So it'll be second down and six. Just underway here, third quarter, 14 6 Saints. As they come up to the line of scrimmage near hash mark. Tight formation. Two men split out here to the right. One back. Beat Tommaso. Martinez keeps it himself. He's getting nowhere this Martinez time. Martinez on the keeper. Delgado finished Lost him off. One on the play. You know, Nelson the stop is number 85. Also Ash on the stop Price. along with Arnold. And James Nelson. Loss of a yard. Long Second down and Arnold six. Ball back stop. over It'll be third and six the 45. Back the to about the 44. So a big third down play for the Timberwolves. Defense, see if they can master that deception in the backfield from Martinez on this particular play. This time he play action. He's rolling, rolling, throw, short little pass. It's caught, but short of the first down with a nice pass tackle that time by Cody Velasi. Di Tommaso made the catch, but Velasi with a nice Picking stop. About three on the play will not be, be fourth down and five. Down, bringing up fourth the ball down still the in their in side of the 50-yard line. The Saints will no doubt pop. Clavel, the man back to receive. Robledo, the punter, has done a really outstanding job so far, kicking and punting and kicking the extra points. He's the left footer. They're short one man. 
This is the second time this guy has been running out onto the punt formation team <laughs> late. There's the snap, and he's going to punt it away. Kind of a knuckly punt, another good punt for the Saints. Takes another Saints bounce all the way down to the 12-yard line. Kick is down by Briar Scott at the 12-yard line. So another close to 50-yard punt. Both punters having a field day here tonight. 9.51 to go third quarter, 14-6. Saints Timberwolves will have it first down, but they'll have it deep in their own territory at their own 12-yard line. First possession of the second half. Out of the spread, running that veer out of the spread. Clavel, short drop, looking over the middle, pass, caught. Man wide open, that's Curdai. He's to the 20, to the 25, cuts back at the 30, and still on his feet at the 33-yard line. Pass goes to Wyatt Curtai. Nice pass from Clavel, nice run after the, the catch. Up about 18. First down for the Timberwolves out to the 33-yard the line. They get a little breathing room out of the shadow of their end zone on that play. Be first and 10 now at the 33-yard line. First down, Timberwolves at the 33. Timberwolves have not put the ball in the air too often so far tonight, but had success there. Robertson in the backfield along with Ponce behind Clavel. They'll give it to Robertson. He's got a hole this time. Breaks one tackle across the seam. He comes to the 45, to the 50, to the 40. It's a foot race to the 30. He breaks a tackle and down he goes at the 20. Didn't quite break that last tackle. Eric Martinez. It looked like he was going to get by Martinez, but he was just tripped up enough. But another big gain for the Timberwolves on two consecutive plays. They go from their own 12 to the Saints 20. Nice run by William Robertson that time. Almost broke it all the way. Clavel out of the shotgun now. Robertson in the backfield with him. Curtis split out here left. Myrtle slotted inside him. Clavel's going to run. Tries the right side. Gets up to about the 15. Over the right side. Maybe a five-yard pickup. Second down and five. Eric Martinez in on the stop. Straddling the 15 yard line. Timberwolves need to keep it rolling here. Oh, now down to the 15 yard line. Second and five. 8 20 to go here in this third quarter. Lavelle out of the shotgun with Robertson in the backfield with him. Same play, going to run it again. Cuts back again. Still on his feet. Dives forward. I well, think short of the first down, the but very down, close to about the just short of the 10 yard line. Stop. They have to get it across the 10 to get a first down, and they're just short of the 10. To first down. So it's going to be third down and a yard. Third and Here's a short where the Saints defense now. Let's see if they try and get eight guys up in the box, and if the Timberwolves sometimes. The temptation out of the huddle is to go right up the middle like they did for their touchdown, but other times you can get off the edge, a nice big play maybe into the end zone if they line up tight in the box. They're fairly tight in there right now. Clavel is just going to keep it right up the middle. He'll have the first down and more. Up the sideline, Judge has marked up about the eight-yard line. That'll be enough for a first down. Clavel on the keeper. So it'll be first and goal, actually. They put it right inside the uh, nine-yard line. George Cutting and Gannon Wilson in on the stop. Just short of the eight-yard line where it's first and goal. Timberwolves, the ball spotted between the hash marks. Trailing 14-6, eight minutes to go, third quarter. Up to the line of scrimmage they come. Clavel right over center. Robertson alone back with him. The Saints jumped, I think. It looked like a hard count that time, and the Timberwolves were able to get an aggressive defense there to jump. Half the distance will bring it inside the five, down to about the four-yard line. So it'll be first and goal from the four. And every yard counts when you get inside the 10-yard line. Now Curti split way out here left. Clavel gives it to Robertson. He's trying the left side, ducks low, tries to go inside, and I don't 
think he got there right about the one yard line, I think. Robertson, the ball carrier. Looked like he tried to go underneath. Sometimes you. Robledo and Jake Lehman in on the When you're a ball carrier that close to the goal line, it, it helps to go low. Oftentimes you'll see him try and leap down, over outside the, the line of scrimmage. That seems to be the fashionable way to do it, but sometimes you can be just as successful going underneath if the defensive line is standing up. Anyway, bottom line is he didn't get there, but he got it close. One yard line, second and goal. Clavel. Gives it to Robertson. This time he's got it. No problem. He's in. Touchdown. You can see it as soon as he got the ball. So the Timberwolves score. Make it 14-12 to with 6.53 to go in the third quarter. And across the way, the crowd gives a cheer as the Timberwolves have found Paydirt on their first possession here in the second half. And they went 88 yards on that possession to do it. They got a long pass to Curdi. They got a nice run from Robertson. Clavel uh, with a nice run as well. And then Robertson terminate the... I guess culminate is a better word. <laughs> the drive with a touchdown. Terminate just has a negative effect. Two-point conversion now for the Timberwolves. There's that same play to Robertson, and he's got it again as he gets Two in. Two-point conversion goes to William And that's Robertson, big. That ties it up. Down. The score in the third quarter the with 6.53 to go. It's 14-14. Third, third quarter, excuse me. We have a ball game tied up, 14 off. So the Timberwolves have the come back nicely here. All our workers down Whatever Coach Perkins said to them at halftime was certainly taken to heart. Special thanks to our chain Coach crew, Bondeville Harden, out on the field, Doug and Dave White, tapping guys Alan on the back Harden, of the shoulder pads Larry, after Beck that Valley, nice drive. A lot of credit there. Cross the line. So now the Timberwolves defense. We'll have to hold the line here as they get set to kick it off. Three men across the way to receive it for the Saints just inside their 20-yard line. Velocity to kick it off from the near hash mark. Third quarter, 6.53 to go, 14-14 game. There's the kickoff, end over end, a short kick. Taking it about the 33-yard line where the Saints will fall on top of it and take it over first and 10. Martinez downs the kick at the 39-yard line or 38-yard line. Saints so it'll be first down, first Santa Lita, the ball game. at their own 38-yard line. Put your line. hands together, ladies and gentlemen. This is a good football game. So, Martinez over center for the Saints. First man has it, or does Martinez? No, he fakes, fumble, That's and the Timberwolves loose. may have it. They do. The Timberwolves have recovered the fumble. Julian Clavel. Turn over Saints. And that's the problem the with that option. You could stick it in the belly, and the two of you can go two They're yards together. But if neither one of you decides they want the football, ho, ho, look out. And what has been a very successful play for the Saints, that time backfires. As on the exchange, that ball came loose. Or just after the exchange, after the ball carrier maybe had it for a couple yards. Either way, the Timberwolves get it right back. Clavel back to pass. Throw a short pass over the middle. It's incomplete. Ponce, the intended receiver. Pass Coming across the field, falls right to left, stops across. Uh, stops Coverage in there by the Saints, number 21. Clock. Tommaso, incomplete pass. 6:38 to go, third quarter. 14-14. Timberwolves, second down and 10 at the Saint 38-yard line. Let's see if they can take advantage of that turnover. Curdy is going to split way out here to the left. Covell out of the shotgun now. Robertson, the lone back with him. Clavel's going to run. Not going to get anywhere. Clavel trying to pick his they way smell over that right play. Side, nowhere to go. Third down and 10. Gannon Wilson. Tackle that time stop. by Gannon Wilson for the Saints. No gain on the play. He's been making a lot of tackles here tonight. Third and 10 now. Third and 10. 
You know, that play that was successful for both the touchdown and the two-point conversion. Let's see if you might see that again. Robertson in the back with Clavel. Third down and 10 from the 38. Clavel looking this way, back to pass. Now he's in trouble, steps up. Still in trouble, stepping up, and down he goes. Sacked at the 49-yard line. Clavel, under big pressure, falls to the sack. Fourth Balls down. about 11 on the play. Big third down play for the Saints. Rowan Knight in on the stop. So the Timberwolves. And Eric Martinez also well, there. I would think punt on a 14-14 a fourth and game here. For the Wolves. Fourth down at about 20. Ponce back to punt. Robledo back to receive for the Saints. Ponce at about his 42. He's been punting the ball well tonight, and he needs to get off a good one here. And this time it's off the side of his foot, but it still, nope, takes the Saints bounce this time backwards. Then it goes forwards. Anyway, the bottom line, they're going to have it at about the 30-yard line. Kick is down by Wyatt Kurtai. 31 yard lines where they'll spot it. First to 10, Saints. 14 14, third quarter, five minutes to go. 17 minutes of football left here. Saints will take over. First and 10, five minutes to go in the third quarter. Good game here so far tonight. Both teams equally matched. Timber was probably wishing they had a couple of players suited up that aren't here tonight, but that's the way it goes. First and 10 Saints. Man comes in motion. They pitch it back to him. That's Robledo trying to get outside. Gets around Robertson. They turns back inside. Hit, still on his feet, trying to be stripped of the football, but he hangs on Luis at about Robledo the 32-yard line. Outside. A lot of running, a lot of action, yeah, not much of a gain, maybe two yards. James Nelson in the down and eight. The and Cody Pelosi. So the ball at about the 33 yard line. It'll be second down and eight for the Saints. Near hash mark now. There's a give. First guy through. He's not getting much. Maybe a yard Cody or two. Up, the up to about the 37 yard line. Setting up third down and about four. Tackle made by Johnny Delgado. So it'll be third down and four for the Saints now. Timberwolves defense going to have to gel here, try and get that ball back. 14-14 tie. Martinez gives, and they got a first down. Big third Di down Tommaso. play handoff goes to Cody Di Tommaso, finds enough yardage for a Saints first down. Johnny Same Veer run. On the stop. Either give it to that back or keep it yourself at quarterback. And that time the give was enough for a first down at the 44-yard line for the Saints. Again, he gives it to Di Tommaso. Ponce, first man to stop him. Hand off again to Di Tommaso. Picked up, up about, about four, four or five. It'll be second down and call it five, three, thirty Waylon to go third Morrison. quarter. And Johnny Delgado in on the stop. And the Timberwolves have called a timeout. Yeah, so a timeout on the field. The Fort Bragg Timberwolves tied tonight, 14-14 here at St. Helena. We're in the third quarter. And there's 3.27 to go. Our sponsors making it possible to bring you this webcast on Mendocino TV, including Ryan Perkins, attorney at law, Mendocino Cookie Company, and Zappa's Coffee, Sport Chrysler Jeep Dodge, your favorite sport, Dunlap Roofing, done once, done right, Dunlap, and Fort Bragg Transmission, more than just transmission work. They can work on your vehicle, get the job done right at Fort Bragg Transmission. A little blast from the past there. Some Queen, the St. Helena High School pep band. All right, second down and six now for the Saints. Back to action following the Timberwolf defensive timeout. Di Tomasa gives it to Robledo over the left side, cuts it back short of the first down, but Robledo it's cut close. Around the edge gets there. It 
across and midfield to the Timberwolves right, 47 yard line. Down, stop made by Justin Myrtle. It's going to set up third and one. See if they try and hard count and third and one. Get him off sides. Here's where Isaac Arnold, Nelson, some of the defenders that have been prominent need to come up with a big stop here. Third and short. There's the give. And boy, it's going to be close. It depends on the spot. I'm not sure if he got Tomaso it. To be honest. The right side. And I think they're going to have a measurement here. Timeout for measurement. They are going to measure this one. Official timeout. Pretty hard to tell. They're going to bring out the chains here. We're trying to lean over and see if we can get an angle on it. Either way, they may go for it on fourth down. I don't know. It's 14-14. There's still plenty of time left. But they are pretty close to midfield. They're not that deep in Timberwolf territory. So they're stretching it out, and they're going to be short by about a foot. Fourth and so inches. I think they're going to go for it. So this is a big play for both Spotter teams now. It's about the length of the football. Still a lot of time, 2.52 to go. We're only in the third quarter, 14-14 game, but this is – a big play on fourth down. If the Timberwolves can stop them, they'll get the ball. If they don't, the Saints retain possession. They only need to get it just short of the 45. And it appears they have it. There's just a surge forward on the snap right at the 45. It'll be first down Saints. There's the mark. Picks up enough yardage spot. for a Saints first down. 14-14, third quarter, 2.44 to go. Fort Bragg narrowly lost to Cloverdale in the first league game in a game they could have won. And, of course, lost to Kelseyville, another close game. And tonight they're involved in another good one. So first and ten Saints. This time Martinez keeps it. They're trying to strip Martinez him of the football. On the keeper, Andrew, and they do. They do strip him of the football, and Fort Bragg has it, I think. Wait, we'll see. And that turnover goes to Fort So Bragg. they just strip Martinez, the quarterback. He, that, that option, uh, once again, play where you either keep it or give it to the back, he kept it, and then they held him up. And while they held him up, you could see William Robertson trying to strip him of the football. Eventually he did, and the Timberwolves get it on a big play. Just after the Saints had converted on fourth down, a turnover gives it to the Timberwolves. They'll have it first down at their own 47-yard line. Out of the shotgun, Clavel will take the snap. There's this, look, they're setting up a screen. There's Curdi wide open. He's got it to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, to the 35, to the 30. Out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. That same play that worked a while ago worked again. Curdi coming Bounds across the formation. Two, Wyatt, it's almost like a screen. They let the the quarterback rushers come in towards the quarterback, and then Clavel just kind of floats it over them to Curdi coming across. And, boy, that play has worked twice Bounds nicely. Down to the 24-yard line. That will bring the ball inside the 25-yard line where it will be first down Timberwolves. Big turn of events, a quick fumble, and then a nice big play. Let's see if they can keep it going. On the far hash mark, first down. Clavel will give it to Robertson. He cuts back left, over the 20, inside the 15, down William to the 14-yard line. Here. Close to another to first side. down, picking up about Picks 10 about yards. 11 on the play before he's stopped by number six. Boy, William Flyers Robertson doing stop. a good job tonight with some tough running. So, Timberwolves on the move. Down to two minutes to go, third quarter, 14-14 tie. Robertson in the backfield, Clavel right over center. They give it to Robertson, left side, got some blockers out in front, stiff arms the man at the 10, inside the 5, down to the 3, first down, Timberwolves, I think. 
William Robertson Pretty close. being forced out of bounds by Lehman. Gets another close to 10-yard pickup. Depends where he went out of bounds. I guess he went out at the five, so he's going to be just short of the first down, second and one. Eight. Going to bring up a second and two now. Ball at the five-yard line. He's got to get to the four-yard line to get a first down. 141 to go. Third quarter. Timberwolves on the march. 14-14 tie. Clavel gives it to Robertson. Left side again. Breaks one tackle, but can't break the other. But did he get the first Robertson down? The ball He's going to be close. It might be just short. Setting up third and Stop less than a yard. Breyer, Scott. Ball is just short of that uh, four-yard line, or right on the four. You have to get it just inside. So you might think if they can get set on the formation, just a quick snap and straight up the middle, down to about a minute to go here in this third quarter. Tie game, 14-14. And right up the middle goes Clavel. He's got the first down and more. I think he might be in the end zone. There's the call. Touchdown, Timberwolves. Finds the end zone. Touchdown, Timberwolves. And the Fort Bragg Timberwolves have taken the lead 20-14, to 14, scoring two touchdowns here in this second half, unanswered thus far. Now for the extra point, 20-14, to 14, the Timberwolves have now taken the lead for the first time here tonight. Under a minute to go, third quarter, still a lot of time to go. Timberwolves will go for two. Last time they ran that same play to Robertson around the left side. There it comes. Same play. Here comes Robertson. He's in. Two-point conversion. And it's now 22-14. Fort Bragg. Under a minute to go third quarter. How about that? The Timberwolves with a big, big game here tonight. Still a long ways to go in this thing, but if they can get a win tonight... That would be huge. And St. Helena is starting to look a little deflated along the sidelines, to be honest. But again, you're one big play away from being right back in this thing. And this is high school football. You like to see the coaching staff again across the way from the Timberwolves coming out to pat the players on the back as they come off the field. Coach Perkins having a word with Clavel along the sideline before the kickoff team goes out there. Two of them going over things. So far, so good for the Timberwolves. So Cody Velasco will kick it off. 22-14 Fort Bragg. Still a whole fourth quarter left. Velocity, low kick, liner taken up at the 34. Gets up to about the 40-yard line before he's dropped. Still enough time for a play or two here in this third quarter. So the Timberwolves defense has played pretty well here tonight. They've been fooled a little bit on that veer option, but then again, so have I. And uh, now at this time in the game with an eight-point lead, it's up to the defense. First down Saints at the 41-yard line. Martinez with the ball, rolling, looking, throwing, nobody there, incomplete. Actually coming, it looks like across there was Adkins. The intended receiver, but that ball was thrown Martinez well out of his first down range. So it'll be second and ten. We have a second and ten from the 41-yard line. All right, second down and ten for the Saints. Martinez gives it to the first man up the middle. He's got some good yardage. Myrtle and off goes had to Cody tackle him. D. Tommaso, the ball carrier, also up Ponce on the stop, but he picked up about seven. Setting up third down and about three. 
36, 35, 34 seconds to go. About seven, going to be third and three. That incomplete pass a moment ago stopped the clock. Otherwise, this third quarter would be over. But now it's third and three, just short of midfield. At the 48, there's the give. Running back is knocked backwards, short of the first down, right at the 49-yard line. Di Tomasa, the ball carrier. 12, 11, 10 seconds to go in this third quarter. Fourth down at the 49, and that'll be the last play, I believe, of this third quarter. They'll let it run down, and that'll do it. Well, here's the score. It's Fort Bragg 22, St. Helena 14, as the Timberwolves have scored a couple of touchdowns here in this third quarter to take the lead. And now with 12 minutes left, they lead it 22-14. Again, Timberwolves football brought to you in part by Ryan Perkins, attorney at law, Mendocino Cookie Company, and Zappa's Coffee, Sport Chrysler Jeep Dodge, your favorite sport. Dunlap Roofing, done once, done right, Dunlap, and Fort Bragg Transmission. And wherever you're watching, thanks for joining me. Lindy Peters from MendocinoTV.com. We got us a game here tonight. Beautiful evening here in St. Helena. They have some of the best lights. They have certainly the best artificial surface field in the North Coast League, maybe north of San Francisco (laughs) for high school. I'll tell you what. So big play to start this fourth quarter. The Saints, it looks like they're going to go for it on fourth down. The ball just shy of midfield. They have to get it to the Timberwolves' 49-yard line, so it's a little more than a yard to go. They're lined up in a tight formation. There's a give, and And I think he's got a first down. D. Tomasa, the first man through, gets the first first down. down. Keep this drive going. Saints are now inside. First down at the Timberwolves 48 yard line. Made by number 77, Isaac Arnold, and number 88, Logan Ponce. So the Saints come up to the line of scrimmage. We'll keep our eye on the clock now. 22 14, fourth quarter, just underway. Fort Bragg with the lead. There's the give to the first man through. That was beautifully read that time by Nelson. Tomaso takes the handoff. Velasi also side, helped him out. Did pick four, up some yardage, second though. And second down and six. About a four-yard pickup at the Timberwolves 44-yard line. James Nelson and Cody Pelosian on the stop for the Timberwolves. Up to the line of scrimmage come the Saints. Fort Bragg, second and six. Now on defense, trying to hold him. There's a fake... Martinez keeps it, tries the left side, nothing there. A short the stop, a short pickup. Pick Maybe one. Jake Nelson. Nelson and Ethan Hall. Jeffrey's in on the stop. Jeffrey's also in on the stop. Third down and five. No gain that time. Five now. Ball right at the Timbers' 43 yard line. 10 54 left in the game. As they keep the ball on the ground, the clock will continue to run. Martinez gets the play from the sidelines and trots back out there. Martinez keeps it, fumble, ball's loose, still on the ground. The Timberwolves have it at midfield. And that's the problem with that veer option, as I said. You know, when you start handing it off, then keeping it, and then handing it off, and sometimes two of you keeping it together for three yards, and then the other guy has it, eventually... It just, at this level especially, can create some problems. And you just saw it again as he couldn't decide whether to keep it or hand it off. And that indecision and a hit and boom, ball's on the ground. Timberwolves have it right at midfield. First down leading 22-14. They can, at the very least, take some time off the clock on this drive. Clavel gives it to Robertson. Right up the middle he goes and backs his way forward to about the 45-yard line. Second down and five. five. Good job by the defensive, uh, the Fort Bragg defense tonight. They have given up a couple of big plays for touchdowns or or setting up touchdowns, but overall, one big touchdown play, a 60-yard run. My point being the Timberwolf defense has played very well so far tonight. Clavel gives it to Robertson. Left side, he's got some room. Hurdles a man to the 25, to the 20. 
to the 10, and down he goes at the 8-yard line. William Roberts in the Big ball run, no in. penalties. Down Robertson inside the 10 yard line. Hurt his leg. It's either, a, let's hope it's a leg cramp. I think that's what it is, the way he's in pain there. And well, that'll the stop the clock with 9.43 to go in the game. The ball will be just inside the 12 yard line. Nice run by William Robertson. It's about the 30 yard line. He hurdled a guy and then kept going up the left sideline. I think all he's got is a cramp over there. So he'll have to st sit out at least one play either way. But he's going both ways and having a great game, offense and defense. William Robertson, who just scored a touchdown and a two-point conversion a few minutes back and right now is on his back across the way. Now he's getting up. It seems to be okay. So, again, it looks like it was just a leg cramp. But, boy, those things can hurt. So it's first down Timberwolves at the 12-yard line, knocking on the door, leading in this one, 22-14, 9.43 to go in the game. Clavel looking over the defense right now. Ponce back behind him. Bad snap, almost lost the snap, kept it, and dove forward to about the 10. Second down. Bell on the keeper. Robertson quickly back in the game Picks now. About two on the play. Rowan Knight in on the stop. 9.26 to Wilson. go and counting down. Fort Bragg with the lead. And a game that could really help determine the outcome of the season. If they get a win here and they can beat Willits and Middletown, they're going to be in good shape for a potential playoff spot. But that's a big if. Lots, lots of football to go here. They try and draw him off sides. Instead, they give it to Robertson. He cuts back across the left side. Still going. Churning his feet down to about the seven-yard line, I think. It's going to be third down. Ball is loose. Runner was... we got a little discussion going on with the officials. I Runner think was pulled down. The bottom line is going to be third down. Ball is spotted at the, uh, let's see where they put it down, right at the six-yard line. They can get a first Ball down at the two. Six yard line. So it's third and four. This part of the field, they've been running left a lot, but now they're on the left hash mark, so they might come back to the right here. Let's see. Third down and four at the six. Clavel out of the shotgun. He's going to keep it himself. Cuts back. Dives forward. I think he's got the first down. Depends again where well, the side judge keeper. marks it. But I think you he's know, got the first down at about the two. And Rowan Knight. No, he's short. By about a yard, it looks like. Fourth looks and like a yard. It's going to be a fourth and one right around the two and a half yard line. Ball just inside the three. They got to get it to the two. Quickly up to the line of scrimmage. And what do we have? Whistles stopped action. The Saints called a timeout, timeout I think. 8.19 to go in the game. 22 14. Timberwolves with the lead. With two remaining with 8.19 remaining in the fourth quarter. So here's the deal, 8-19 to go in the game on this timeout. The Saints trying to see if they can come up with a defensive stop. The Timberwolves hoping to get a touchdown. Actually, it would be better if they got a first down and took a few more plays to get a touchdown to take some time off the clock. Right now leading by 8, 22-14, in a position on the field to get more points. And they really do need to get at least another touchdown to try and put some breathing room here between them and the Saints. It's been a very evenly matched game thus far tonight. Fort Bragg, though, has come out in this second half and taken the lead and hoping to increase that lead right here, right now. Fourth and one. 
Lavelle, right up the middle he goes. Lavelle on the keeper. I think he's got the first down, but I'll wait. Short of the end zone, but enough for a first down. It'll be first and goal, Wolves. Don't have the official first down yet from the, there he goes. First down, clock running, and that's good. So the Timberwolves could take a little more time off the clock now before they score. Of course, that's not a foregone conclusion for a touchdown. We've got a lot of things that could happen. Right over center goes Clavel, bounces off one guy, goes over the left guard. Velocity. Touchdown, Timberwolves. Touchdown, Timberwolves. 28 14 the score, and now they'll try a conversion here. Well, that was a big score for Ford Bragg. They can breathe a little bit easier. This has been a hard-fought battle so far. Still not over by any stretch of the imagination. But now with a two-touchdown lead, fourth quarter, 7.54 to go, it's looking pretty good. And if they get a two-point conversion here, that would make it even look more comfortable. Back, Robertson, the lone back behind Clavel. He'll give it to him over the left side, cutting back inside, taking a man with him. Did he get there? Yes, he did. Extra point is wow. good. Wow, good second points. effort from William Robertson that time. Good, good thing those leg remaining. cramps went away because, my goodness, he got it in there when it did, looked like Mike had stopped at about the one-yard line. Five. So it's 30-14 to 14 with 7.54 to go in the game. And the Timberwolves, who came over here needing a victory, right now a little bit closer to one. At the start, without two of their two-way starters suited up here tonight, Coach Perkins was a little concerned, but he, he knew his troops were ready. He wasn't questioning that. He just thought that with a you know fairly evenly matched team here at St. Helena that you know just having two less players, both ways starters, might be the difference. But so far tonight, Fort Bragg over, overcoming that and leading by a score of 30-14. to 14. been a very different team for Fort Bragg this year. They started off in Castlemont, got slaughtered. Uh, they, you know, looked a little spotty early on, and then, then they toughened up, and even though they got a couple of losses, like I said, to Cloverdale and Kelseyville, they were in those games, and, and tonight they're starting to dominate here in the second half. Nice to see. Velocity with a kickoff, short kick across the field that comes to the 27-yard line. Up to the 34, dancing around, and finally brought down at about the 40-yard line, and the Saints have it there. 7.47 to go in the game. Briar Scott, the return man line. for the Saints. In on the stop is Wyatt Kurti. Saints will take over first and 10 with 7.47 remaining. Well, we'll see if the Saints choose to put the ball in the air here. They need a couple of touchdowns, and... They need two touchdowns and two two-point conversions just to tie the game. But, hey, there's a lot of time left. Martinez, then we keep the ball on the ground. Short drop, throws it deep. And the man's there, but he turned inside, and the ball went outside. Clavel actually ran Martinez a better route. <laughs> the defender. Fire. Scott falls incomplete. Boy, Scott was open. I thought when the ball left the quarterback's hand, I thought this could be a touchdown, but he, he threw it outside when the receiver cut back inside. Running the post and the... Quarterback threw the flag. So it'll be second down and 10. That didn't take any time off the clock. Four seconds go by. So when they do throw the ball, it might take a little longer to play this fourth quarter. Instead of give, right up the middle, running the football that time is Di Damaso. Handoff goes to He Cody picked up DiDomaso about four, up about maybe five. Four. It'll be third down and about five. Ball right at the 44-yard line. Paul Jeffries and Isaac Arnold in on that stop. So third down now for the Saints. Martinez, quick pass to the sideline. Throws it high in the air, and it's incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Pass intended for Luis Robledo. That's a dangerous pass, especially when you tip it in the air. If a defender happens to be trailing, that could go the other way real easily. So it'll be fourth down. The Saints will have to go for it here, trailing by a couple of touchdowns. Clock stops, 7-10 to go in the game. 
Two men splitting out here left, and the Saints are going to call a timeout. Timeout, San Lina. Second charge timeout of the half, one remaining. So that'll be their second timeout. They'll have one left. Gives us a chance once again to thank our sponsors and make it possible to bring you Timberwolves football here. If you're enjoying our webcast tonight, thanks for joining us. Ryan Perkins, attorney at law, Mendocino Cookie Company, and Zappa's Coffee. Our friends at Fort Bragg Transmission, they do more than transmission work there at Fort Bragg Transmission. Dunlap Roofing and Sport Chrysler Jeep Dodge. Your favorite sport. Thanks again to everybody that makes it possible to bring you these live webcasts from St. Helena, California. Beautiful evening here in Napa Valley. And right now things are looking pretty rosy for the Timberwolves, too. 30-14. They've got the lead. 7-10 to go in the game. The Saints. There's the pitch. Double reverse pass. Instead, he's going to run, and he's got a first down. Across the midfield, he comes. Granados. Granados, the stop ball carrier on the reverse. Velocity made the stop. Enough yardage for a Saints first down. Now Saints get a first down Rose at territory. the Timberwolves 48-yard line. Ten. Under seven minutes to go now. Two men split out here left for the Saints. Man comes in motion. They give to him. Robledo over the left side. He's tackled, though, short after maybe a yard. Robledo, the ball carrier, no gain on the play. Jeffries, Hall Jeffries on the stop. Also, Ethan Hall Jeffries. Cody Velossi gets up. Cody Velossi on the stop. No gain, second and ten. One back behind Martinez. De Tommaso. He's back to pass, setting up a screen, rolling. He's sacked. Beautiful Martinez job that time. Under big pressure. Ash Price in on that sack. Price made the stop for the Timberwolves. He basically put a little pressure on it. Looked yeah, like they were setting up a screen as Martinez was almost third and long now looking as though the quarterback was letting the rushers to him to set up a screen, but he never got the playoff. Price was on him before he could develop any kind of a play, and it's a huge loss. Third down and about 22 now. Martinez fakes the pass, or fakes as though he's going to pass. Instead, hands off to DiTomaso. Pick up of about three on the play. Setting up fourth down. Clock Pelosi continues to run. 5.30 to go in the game. 30-14. The Timberwolves, as each second ticks down now, Closer to a big W. One man splitting way out here to the bottom of your screen to the left. And what do we got? Timeout, Timberwolves. Timeout, Fort Bragg. It's fourth down at about 22. The Timberwolves probably wanting to make sure they know where that first down marker is and make sure that they get the ball back here on downs if possible and, and then really put this game away with 5.15 to go. The Saints, remember, only have one timeout left, so they won't be able to stop the clock. A lot more comfortable now with that two-touchdown lead here in the fourth quarter than the one-touchdown lead, that's for sure. That changes the dynamic considerably. So here it is, fourth down and about 20. They can get a first down at the Timberwolves' 38-yard line. They've got the ball at the, their own 43. So here we go. Martinez, short drop, throwing right side. It's caught. Martinez makes the pass beautifully. The catch made inside the 30, and running back the other way comes the Timberwolves, but... Martinez's pass. They're ruling the ball is down. By Caleb Granados. Kind of a confusing play there. It's first down. The referee never did blow his huge whistle. Fourth down play for a Saints first down. The well, the Saints are still in this game, folks. This game is not over by any stretch of the imagination. 5-10 to go. 
that play right there kept, kept the Saints' hopes alive. And the Timberwolves' defense, again, fourth down. You call a timeout and let you give up a 20-yard play. <laughs> and Robertson, I don't know what he was looking at, the defender. He it was beat by a good five yards on that play. I don't know why they should have just had all their defenders standing at the first down marker. That's where the defense should have st- stood, in my opinion, and make them throw it underneath. Now, the Timberwolves think that they stole that ball and ran it back the other way. The whistle never did blow, according to uh, the sideline yelling over there. I don't know what happened. There's still some discussion going on, but I believe the Saints have it first down at the 24-yard line. That's the call. So... You Five, just ten, suck it up and deal with it. Saints first and ten at the twenty-five yard line. First down, St. Helena. Now, there's a quick pass out here to Atkins. Stiff arms one man, and then he goes down. Myrtle is and Jack that's Atkins. Clavel on the stop. They kept him in bounds to keep the, the clock going. Justin Myrtle and under Julie five minutes Clavelle. to go in the game now. Ball at the twenty. One on the play. Twenty-three yard line. Two yard pickup. Second down and eight. Martinez over center again. There's that same pass. In the air it comes. Robertson finally turns around and knocks it away. Pass intended for Caleb Granados, defended by William Robertson. Stops the clock third and eight. 4.31 to go in the game. 30-14, Timberwolves leading, but St. Helena making it interesting now. Back to what I was saying last week during our broadcast. You have got to scream ball when it's in the air. Everybody's got to yell ball, ball, ball. And the defender, you got to turn your head. Keep running, but turn your head. Look for the ball. All right, here it is. Third down. Back to pass Martinez. Getting some pressure. Steps up. Now he's hit. He's sacked at the 30-yard line. Martinez back to pass. is sacked. Again, Price in on that stop. Mitchell was in on there. Sack is Ash Price. That'll be back at the 28, 29-yard line. Another fourth down play, fourth down and 13, and the Saints are calling their final timeout with 4.09 to go in the game. 30-14, Fort Bragg. And 13 coming up for the Saints. Take a timeout with 4.09 remaining in the game. Kind of quiet all of a sudden here at the uh, field. It was, you could feel a little buzz of excitement when the Saints converted that last fourth down, but now let's see if they've got another magic trick in their hat again defensively the Timberwolves need to look see the 15 yard line just don't let them get to the 15 yard line and it's our football and it's pretty much our game at that point St. Lena High School prep band fourth down and 14 and now as I look out on the field, the defense for the Timberwolves, in fact, are lined up at about the 15-yard line. Let's see if they move up a little bit, but you got four of them back there with the official, the back judge. In my opinion, is where they should be. If he wants to try and throw, he's throwing floaters when he puts it in the air. Now they move up to about the 20. And now what's going on? Now the Timberwolves have called a timeout. Well, that's what happens when there's four minutes left in a game. They can take about 20 minutes sometimes or longer. So the Saints call a timeout. They come up to the line of scrimmage. They don't even get a snap off, and the Timberwolves call a timeout. Well, last time on fourth down when Coach Perkins had a timeout, whatever he told him didn't work. So see what he says right now. Not that it's any fault of the coaching. And again, it's easy to be up here and wonder why a defender's not turning his head when the ball's in the air coming right to the receiver who's one foot away from him. You know, you, you don't just stick your hands up with your back to the quarterback. At, at that point, you're hoping the defender will turn around. But anyway, let's see what they do here. Kurt I, the free safety's back at about the 17. They are a little deeper now, defending. This time they're throwing the other way. The ball is, oh, that would have been a pick six. Cody Velasi had it thrown right to him and missed it. It doesn't matter. It's fourth down. The Timberwolves take over on downs. 
Cody's got to feel worse than anybody right there. That would have been, there was nothing. Well, I'm not sure he's fast enough to go all the way, but I tell you what, there was no one other than the sideline bench players that could have tackled him within the first 20 yards anyway. So the Timberwolves get it over on downs, first down. There's 4.04 left in the game. The Saints are out of timeouts, I think, now, so the Timberwolves just need to run the ball and hold on to the football. They give it to William Robertson. He goes right up the middle. Robertson up the middle. And the clock will continue to tick. About a four-yard pickup, second down and six. Ball at the 32-yard line. 30-14 Timberwolves trying to ride this one out and have a happy bus ride home. What they should be doing now is keeping their eye on that scoreboard and, and running the clock down, having the official help them know how much time is left before they have to get the playoff. The official will count it down just like a basketball official with his hand and show you. Cavell over center now, and he just goes right up the middle. Clearly, they're just trying to run the clock down now. Clavel on the keeper. Down to three minutes to go in the game. So if they get themselves a the road next week. couple first downs here. And NCL one action. That should do it. Again, the Timberwolves just very slowly getting as much time off the clock before they run a play. They give it to Robertson. He's going to try and get outside. He's not going to get outside. It'll be fourth Robertson down. The ball carry around the left side. But Nothing we're about there. two and a half minutes to go in the game. So the Timberwolves. Stop by Cody D. Tomaso and Daniel Martinez. I almost would not, you know, almost work. bad things. Be fourth down. Well, never mind. I'm, I'm not a football coach up here, but oh. Something worse, in my opinion, could happen on a punt than just running a ball on fourth down and just turning it over on downs. Only my opinion. They're going to let the clock keep running down about two minutes here before they punt the ball away. Fourth down. There's the snap. Well, it didn't go over his head. And there is the punt. He did get it away. It's a sailor. It's taken at the 32-yard line up the right sideline. And this is what I'm talking about. He's free to the 50 to the 40, to the 30, penalty flags are down, and there's a tackle by Clavel, an illegal tackle, two penalty flags are down. Well, Why they punted the, the ball, I'll never know. Inside the 20, but there's flags all over the field. I believe this is going to be offsetting penalties, and they're going to punt it again, or not punt it again, maybe run the ball this time. As it is, there's a minute 36 to go in the game. So there's plenty of time to go if this stands, and the Saints have it at the 17-yard line. They get a touchdown or an onside kick. You know, again, they got to make their conversions, but it makes it interesting. But I think, well, wait and see. Actually, they're talking to the Saints, not the Timberwolves, about this penalty. So there's personal fouls on both sides of the ball. I think the PA announcer is wrong. I think both penalties were against the Timberwolves, and that's why the Saints are going to have it at the 17-yard line. There's no reason the official would be talking to the Saints about a penalty if it was against the Timberwolves, but maybe I'm wrong. Let's see. No, it is. They're offsetting penalties. They're going to punt it again. So they're going to re-kick. Those penalties will Offsetting offset, penalties. Replay fourth down. So the official was talking to the Saints because it was that horse collar tackle on Clavel he was talking to them about. Meanwhile, there was a holding or a blocking in the back penalty on that punt return. So with a minute 36, we'll do it again, and the Timberwolves are electing to punt it again. You know, conventional football, if it's high level, obviously you punt it. But at this level, you know, you could hike it over the head. I don't know. But he's going to punt it again. 
and gets it away again. And this time the Saints are going to try and return it again. And here he goes, Breyer, over the right side. Got some room again. There's a block in the back, not called over the right sideline and up across Breyer's midfield takes that to about almost to the original down, line of scrimmage. The 40 yard line. About seven, eight yards short of the Number original line of scrimmage there. Punch, running him out of bounds. With a minute 24 to go, the Saints have the football. They're at the Timberwolves 42 yard line. Saints will take over with 124. Well, actually, they mark, the mark it back at the 44 yard line. Ball will be at the 44 yard line. So the Saints trailing 30-14, minute 24 to go. Have to come up with a couple of uh, big plays here or the Timberwolves are going to have to make a couple of big mistakes. Boy, it's taking a long time to get this play off. They're trying to hide a receiver out here next to the coach. Clavel sees him out here, though. That's one of those old trick plays. Try and hide a guy along the sideline, but... Timberwolves were wise to it. Martinez throws, catch, up the sideline he goes. He's kept in bounds at about the 31-yard line. Granados picks up about 14 on that play. So the clock will Logan tick as soon as they move the, the chains. A minute 20 to go in the game. It'll be a first down for Sinalina at the 31-yard line. They told him to run the clock. Now they get it started. About the 31, about the 31. Short drop pass, caught. Then he drops the football. Was it incomplete? Should be an incomplete pass, but let's see. Pass goes to you never know. 81, Caleb Granados. It is. Timberwolves football. Fumble. And that'll be the game. After the catch, recovered by the Wolves. That's it. They do not re, uh, review high school football plays. That was a catch and a fumble. The Timberwolves have it. This game is in the books. They nearly, merely have to knee Take a knee here for three straight plays, and that'll do it. The Saints are out of timeouts. What a game. The Timberwolves coming back here in the second half, trailing 14-6. to six, Scored 24 unanswered points, three touchdowns and three conversions, and they're going to come home with a victory tonight. There you see them shaking hands. It's just a matter of formality now as they have to just take the knee down and not get the penalty to stop the clock. Both teams played pretty equal football through halftime. Remember, the Saints led at halftime 14-6. And then Fort Bragg turned it on the second half, and 30-14 to is going to be your final here tonight. As Fort Bragg, again, just probably the most boring thing in, uh, in sports is this particular ending of a football game where one team with the lead simply takes the knee to run out the clock. And that'll do it. And this game's it. over. The Timberwolves have won it. How about that? They come to St. Helena, and they beat the Saints under the lights. The final, Fort Bragg 30, St. Helena 14. I'm Lindy Peters from MendocinoTV.com. We want to thank our sponsors once again that make it possible to bring you Timberwolves football, including Sport Chrysler Jeep Dodge, Dunlap Roofing, Mendocino Cookie Company and Zappa's Coffee, Ryan Perkins, Attorney at Law, and Fort Bragg Transmission. Thank you to the sponsors. If you have a chance, make sure and thank them. And thank you for enjoying Timberwoods football here on Mendocino TV. I'm Lindy Peters for Terry Vaughn from St. Helena. Again, the final. It's Fort Bragg 30, the St. Helena Saints 14. That'll do it from St. Helena High School. I'm Lindy Peters. Good night, everybody.